Season six, or sorry, season, series six, to sort of prime you for uh, series seven of Doctor Who. You know, we're going to pull up any questions that, you know, were left unanswered in some of the episodes that we're hoping to see answered. Um, we're going to, you know, discuss, you know, some of the high points, low points throughout the season. Um, you know, what what might have been a little bit of a letdown or just stuff that like, totally has got, caught us out of left field, which is always exciting. And then we're going to have a little bonus round that, you know, longtime watchers and, and viewers will remember this when you see this two up. Poor Clinton and Lacey at the end of episodes, um, but I, I think it's going to help bring up some questions and some some more thought provoking um, conversation here uh, tonight today, uh, whenever you you end up watching this. Um, but I am your host uh, David Wishamp, and I am joined by t by my two amazing co hosts Angela Pritchett and Drew Meyer. And so let us just jump right in here by saying that. We are going to be reviewing the entire season six, so spoilers if you haven't seen oh, it. Yeah. Really, what are you doing watching this show? Go and actually watch season yes. six. Because season seven's coming. Yes. Sorry, I'm an American. Season seven. Um, yeah. Anyway, so. Okay. So, um, uh, series six, season six, um, starts with uh, the, the Christmas episode of Christmas Carol. Um, do we think there's anything of importance in that episode that's going to be brought into uh, series seven? I hope so, but I don't imagine so. I mean, um, what would you hope they would bring? Well, I don't know. Look, I'm such a huge fan of Christmas Carol. I thought it was a brilliant fact, possibly one of the mm -hmm. best episodes of any of the new um, Who. Um, surprisingly enough, uh, uh, well, no, I can't say surprisingly enough, but I, I just I really enjoyed the episode. I thought, other than Blink, I don't think a new episode of Doctor Who has dealt with time travel in as creative a fashion. So... Do I hope that maybe we'll see Kazran somewhere in the 50th episode? No. Um, maybe we'll, we'll have references to um, the Doctor's marriage to Marilyn Monroe. That, if, I think if one thing came in out of that, it would probably be that one. Um, or a photograph of him with Marilyn Einstein and Frank Sinatra. Um, but I love the episode. I, I, I really I thought, What a way to start a season. Up really well, <laughs> yeah. but um, I enjoyed it. I love the Christmas specials, so okay. Uh, I'm not gonna say much about it. Um, I, mean, I, I think you covered everything. Um, so we move on to the real, I think, the real beginning of the season. Absolutely. Uh, um, the impossible astronaut. Just jump in there, just to go back, Chris Michelle. Yeah. Chris Michelle really does cover the beginning of it, but we'll talk about that later. But yeah. absolutely, it really gets into full swing with the impossible astronaut. Yes, the impossible astronaut. What do you think has been left unsaid? Actually, I think with the with the impossible astronaut, we also talk about day of the moon. It was a really a two parter absolutely. season, um, season thing. What do you think was left unanswered? So much, so much. Um, this is where I wish I had my notebook. Yeah. Um, wow. Okay, a ton of stuff. I felt. Um, Un over unanswered or what we're going to see later? What, what do you think we're going to see from these two episodes in the new season that people could be looking out for? Well, um, one of the things I think we're still looking in, and I think Moffat likes to drag, not drag, because drag has a negative connotation, but he likes to bring in things from other seasons. I still think that we are um, potentially looking at the, where the TARDIS came from that the Silents were using. Um, that was something that we see um, in Series 5 at Craig's house, the random TARDIS. It could be. Uh, we know that, that the TARDIS above Craig's house um, needed pilots, and they were trying to suck in everybody they could. Well, okay, admittedly, River Song did mow them all down, so that could be the way that it became abandoned. But 
the, the doctor's insistence that the tunnels of the silence have been around forever, I'm thinking that we're not done with the silence. Yeah. Um, so I think that is something we'll see. Well, of course, the silence hasn't fallen yet either. The silence has not fallen that we know of. Well, the silence will fall when the, when the question is asked. That's true. Yes, well, okay. <laughs> and we know what the question is now, too. We, but we, we, that's stripping ahead of ourselves know, there. We do know the question, and I think I know who answers the question, because in episode uh, one uh, of, of uh, The Impossible Astronaut, I think we, we are given who is going to ask that question. And see, that's going to be a teaser to when we get all the way to the end of this, okay. that I'm going to make him uh, answer okay. his, his belief. What do you think? I, I think we will possibly see the silence again. I just think they were just so popular, too, that there would be no way that Moffat wouldn't at least hint towards them somewhere well, later on. Well, he's been hinting at them since he took over well, the yeah, show. Yeah, but I meant, like... Even in, in the drawing with the, with the Doctor's Mouse shown shut in The Beast Below, I mean, he I, they're definitely not done. I mean, he, I think, has, has plans for them. Sure. Oh, are you saying the silent... As a race or the silence as a religious order? As a religious order. Okay. Yeah, no, of course. The, sil the yeah. silence is a religious order. I would like to see the silence with the TS um, mm -hmm. come back because they're pretty nifty. And a question. Do you, um, this is, no, I'll ask that when we, when we get I do also hope we see there. Canton again, too. Um, I'd like to see Canton again. We are dealing with the episode that takes place in New York. Yeah. Um, I just feel that Canton's character was brought in and kind of almost conveniently... Yeah, they're, they're, you're done. They're, it's, but we'll see. I, I will address that. There okay. has been rumors that he was supposed to show up somewhere at the end of last season. Or mm -hmm. uh, actually, at the end of this season, sorry. I'm, I'm just thinking ahead to Series 7. So, I mean, I think there is a really good chance we might see Canton again. Sure, that'd be nice. Um, the, uh, though I, I, had to, I had to wonder, where did the dwarf star metal come from? Yes, that's, thank you. That was on my notes. Yes, the, the, um... Oh, what do they call it? The Zero Something Dwarf Star Metal. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was. I watched the. We went and rewatched the series, and there's absolutely no reason for them to have had that unless the Doctor themselves provided it. Um, we have the Silence Need a Spacesuit, but that wasn't excluded. Yes, thank you for that. Um, yeah. Uh, very curiouser and curiouser. Yeah. Where did the beard come from? Um, but uh, yeah, I think that'd be kind of interesting. Yeah. Will they answer it? Probably not, but it would be. Interesting. I don't think we're going to get a complete wrap-up. Any, anything from this that you think, you, anything that you would like to see addressed that hasn't been addressed in those episodes? Hmm. It's been a while since I've watched them. Okay. I didn't have a chance to watch all of these last week okay. because I was out of town. Then we come to the awesome, uh, the uh, Pirate Amy episode. Um, is, is that what qualifies as an awesome episode? <laughs> yes. Amy I, dresses I, the pirate? Exactly. Um, and... Honestly, I, I think we're done and over with that. Yeah, we saw the we saw the pirates again. So. Do you think Do you think we're gonna see him come back? I'm to try it. The pirates? No, no, I don't think so. I think he's too busy with Down Abbey. Um, I'm trying to imagine if there's anything else that I, I wanted to say about that episode. No, no. Yeah, I, I, I think that was like just a total one off. Okay, the Doctor's wife. Um, Neil Gaiman's love love letter to Doctor Who. Um, and there weren't bird people on it since he made that. Yeah. Um, on his blog. Do you think there's going to be anything from that episode that's really going to play later on? I definitely wrote that there was going to be something. So what you need to do is, after this episode airs, you need to check uh, on Facebook for me posting all of my notes from Season 6 to go, wait, I forgot to say yeah. this. And of course, we also want to hear your comments. And well. then I'm also going to uh, take all that information and also put it on the website um, under, under, these, under these entries. Um, and I, I think I do have a question for that, but, but we'll get to that later. Um, specifically in that episode, I, I would be surprised. Um, I think that was... I think Moffat realizes how good that episode was and probably doesn't even want to tweet. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. want to have to worry about... And, I mean, I, I think our big thing is we'll see another game in episode during the 50th. Really? He wants to do it. Oh, yeah, he, he, said if, it. he said if he could, that's all he'd want to do. You know, he'd have to be locked in a corner and just right after he would love to have that job. Yeah. Which... Would be interesting to see a you know a season kind of guided by him, kind of like Douglas Adams did. Um, it'd be interesting to see. Um, but 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 yeah, I gotta say I don't think there's gonna be a lot that comes out of that. No, probably not. Um, Unless we get more references to previous time lords, yeah. because with the fiftieth anniversary, you gotta look at at our um, the tenth anniversary, the twentieth anniversary, and then the yeah the 
two doctors. Was that 20? That was 10. Or it was either 10 or 15. It was two. Wait, oh, wait. Yeah, sorry. Two, two doctors, I think, three. is um, is 25th. Yeah, that was 25th. Was 25th. Yeah. So um, they don't actually go to Gallifrey. But it would be interesting. Right. God, I hope they don't bring Gallifrey back. Anyway. Um, I, I, I have a bad feeling they are. Uh, okay, then we have another two-parter, really. Um, which was also our cliffhanger for the season. No. No, no it wasn't. No, it felt yeah, like it though. It, 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 yeah, it felt like it though. Because at the end of at the end of the, the two part, I was just like, the next episode couldn't could get here quick enough. But we have the Rebel Flesh and the Almost People. Yeah. Okay. You rewatch the the season, and if you got to skip two episodes, this is gonna be the two episodes you skip. Except They're... for the last ten minutes of the Almost People. Absolutely. Except for the last ten minutes of the Almost People. It's a good episode. It's not a bad episode. Did it really need to be two episodes? Probably not, but of course at the end of that episode we have... Amy's revealed as being... Um, what are they called? Ganger. Yeah, a ganger. A ganger. But... but... Go ahead. Uh, but but, the, but the, the important thing, I, I think the, the, the question that really comes up is what's going to have ramifications later on? Ganger Doctor. Um, yes, yes and no. Um, my main concern, not main concern, but when I first saw the episode, it's like, okay, Doctor gives his ganger doppelganger uh, his sonic screwdriver, yeah. and in the next episode he has it again. So it's just kind of like, oh my, look at that. Isn't that interesting? Um, so I don't know if that was just poor editing or something that Moffat's going to go, tee hee hee. I'm sure Moffat actually wands around going, tee hee hee, yeah, yeah. an awful lot when he's not busy um, sweating profusely and writing. Well, I mean, he, g- he gave him the one line that says, the doctor says to the ganger doctor, you know, you could survive this, you're different. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, because honestly, I thought in. I thought the impossible, you know, the doctor that was killed by the impossible astronaut was the Ganger doctor somehow. And they wanted you to believe that. So. And they did. Um, and they've shown us that the TARDIS could pop out screwdrivers right and left. Well, yeah, I guess. But remember, the original doctor used to have to make his. But anyway, that's not yeah. there. there. But yeah. But, <laughs> do you have anything you want to say about these, these two episodes? I kind of agree with you on the if you have to miss anything from the season. Yeah. But, because this was... This, story was one of my least favorites but yeah it's not a bad story yeah it's I not mean, bad it's just it's long it, yeah, it it's feels long, like it's, very, it, it's it's drier than the rest of them sure certainly certainly there's some what would i if i needed to see something from this season it would be kind of how gangers um fit into society afterwards maybe it's something in the future that i would find it interesting but not at the cost of another episode yeah, but you you know you're saying that it brings up an interesting point from even the pre uh, uh, series five, the Solarians when they come back to the planet. Mm-hmm. You know, you also have the Gangers. I wonder if we're ever going to see this utopia that the Doctor is actually creating on Earth. If you think about it, I mean, he's really bringing together the races. Oh God! What if that was the Doctor's overall plan for all fifty years is to make Earth the center of the universe, and we get Daleks and Solarians holding hands and or death weapons and Cybermen singing, singing small world. without, oh, without the sea. Awesome. <laughs> it's a small world, so we're going to have to kill some of you. Um, not, I, I find it, I, it would be very interesting. Then... It's a small world. Exterminate! <laughs> oh, no, no. There, was one, there is one important thing in the Doctor's wife. Okay. Um, a river... Uh, the only water in the forest is the river. Right. I'm wondering if that can have double meaning. Oh, okay. Because you got to remember where where River died. She died in the, in the library. I sure. Know. And the 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 Boston Ra consider <coughs> that their their forest, their, their river, forest. or yeah, their forest. So I'm wondering if it's a double thing about you know maybe in the fiftieth you know how they bring River back is with a ganger body, with their consciousness in it. Um, well, you know, I that's I, I think that's fantastic. I would love to see that. She could take any form um, yeah. at that point in time. I honestly, I thought that River from the end of um, Force of the Dead, mm-hmm. when she goes into this giant, super powerful, most powerful computer ever, yeah. you know, when they mention in um, The Good Man Goes to War, we'll yeah. talk about it in a second, when they mention the, um, the Papal Matrix, the Papal Matrix, yeah. I thought that was going to be River from the future, stuck in a computer, going backwards, oh. referencing. I thought when they, because they mentioned yeah. the the the, um, the Papal Matrix, she, I thought, oh man, if anyone could pull that off, it would be River Song. Okay, then we get A Good Man Goes to War. Which, 
feels like it should have been the end of the entire season, yes. yeah. not just the end of this beginning. Yeah, it was, it, yeah, it was a cliffhanger. Uh, wow. This is one of the first times my dad watched me and just looked over me like, what is your problem? Because I was just crying at the end of this. And we I, have no, no, this yeah. is the one we watched at um, Con Carolinas. Yeah. Yeah, we did. This we, is the one we watched at Con Carolinas. Yeah, this is, yeah. Um, a different episode. Um, wow. There, this... The Barmy Army. Yeah. Um, which could very well be a near flawless episode. Yeah. No, I mean, my, my, I was in chills when just that opening dialogue. Yeah, we started, like, started like screaming at the end of this episode because we watched it in yeah. um, a hotel room at Con Carolinas. Yeah. But the opening, just when she's going through that whole, that whole speech, because you're thinking it's all about the doctor, but then it turns out, you know, she's talking about Rory. I just think, and I think this episode is, is very much key. I think it, it this is the one that has the, the bigger repercussions for what's going to come in in the season to come. Yeah, I actually, you know, when we finally get to the ending, I'm going to go ahead and say I thought that this should have been the ending of the series. Um, I, I thought this was a, a far better uh, episode than the yes. Marriage of Her Song, or really almost any other episode in this season. Uh, it had everything. It created characters that... Um, it made it, you feel for characters that later, <laughs> spoilers, were going to just die. There is some talk I about... I remember seeing lots of people fussing, going, Doctor Who, you can't do that. You can't make me make me feel for a character. And they killed him ten minutes well, later. There's also something also very important in this as well, the Headless Monks. Mm -hmm. Because they were mentioned before this episode. They were mentioned when they break into the... Um, it's actually the Flight of the Byzantine. When they break into that museum, museum. to steal a thing, this was the Order's uh, headquarters before they were wiped out. Yes. So that was the first time they were mentioned, and this is the first time we get to see them. Mm -hmm. So we know at some point hereafter, somebody or something wipes out the headless monks. Hey, for all we know, they could be more or less wiped out in this episode. Well, no, I guess they escape. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, this is this episode's. It's got it all. It's wonderful. I mean, because I mean, people want to see spinoffs of uh, Ginny and the Solarian. I forget her name. Or like, uh, Bashta. I'm gonna say uh. uh they don't have their names written down, but they, they were incredible characters. Um, just it was just it was amazing because I mean I want to see you know if we actually get to see where he meets that one girl, which I know we're never going to. Lauren Bucket. Yeah. You know, the beautiful thing about this episode, um, what really sets it up, if you could say that that was the first episode you watched, you could probably get away with that without being too horribly confused. Is it sets up that there's a lot going on with the Doctor that, you know, we don't see, and it mentions yeah. it. Definitely knew who talks about. What you're watching is not the only story. Real classic who kind of felt like that in yeah. many ways. That yeah. you were watching what was happening in Doctor Who and there wasn't anything else past that. But you had all these characters you've never met before. Um, Strax. Boom, Strax is awesome. Yes. Um, but yeah, no, it, it set up uh, a really kind of a nice expansion to it. And I, honestly, there, there also could be some foreshadowing there because I never caught the line until this last time watching it where, where he says, I am but a nurse. Mm -hmm. Which is that is all Rory it, is. All is Rory is. Oh, absolutely. And I just it, that could just be some horrible foreshadowing to what's going to happen. You in can't it. die. You're a warrior, oh, Rory. I'm a nurse. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, come on. Leave it to Moffat. I didn't even catch this the first so I don't know, three or four episodes of Doctor Who when they reintroduced that Rory becomes a nurse just to placate Amy, who's love of the doctor yeah. it's, i mean it's such a brilliant idea um yeah. it's funny how rory they really took this season and basically said this episode and the next episode is really kind of the redemption of rory yeah uh, as a he's look he's not just that character you watched hmm. it you look the uh, art print um by um kelly yates of the doctor and amy in the tardis and they're kind of their arm in arm and rory's in the background kind of going yeah you know, and that's kind of how it was at the end of the the fifth series. And now season series six come along, and Rory punches Hitler. Yeah. And I remember I remember t uh, talking to Kelly about that, or I was over here and talked to somebody about that piece of my work. The BBC wanted Rory thrown in there at the last minute, hmm. or he had put Rory in there. They wanted it out, but then they changed their mind and they wanted him back in. It was something crazy like that. Because hmm. back then, I mean, I guess they didn't think it, they didn't realize how important Rory was going to be. They still have yet to make an action figure of Rory. You've got Uncle. You can get a packet of Rebel Flesh. You can get one of the... Yeah. Um, but they didn't make it Rory. The only Rory that exists in toy form right now, that except for the ones that people made, I'm assuming, 
uh, is the uh, character build of Rory from one of the upcoming sets. Yeah. That's really sad, yeah. actually. They made a set Roman Centurion for one of the last releases, and it wasn't Rory. It doesn't no. even look like Rory. No. Um, do you have anything you want to say about the uh, A Good Man Goes to War? But yeah, no. Anything that we're going to see? <laughs> we get to see the Doctor's name for the first time. It's in Gallifreyan. Yeah. We get to see Doctor's Crypt. By the way, I'm actually really surprised, Internet, you dropped the ball on this, that there aren't more Doctor Who cribs or the designs for Doctor Who cribs out there. I checked the other day. It's still not out there. Yeah. What the and, hell, right? And honestly, that's also, you know, where they start pushing the issue about his family. Yes. Which I think is going to be very important in Series 7. Um, then we get to Let's Kill Hitler. Yes. By the way, the ending of Barmy Army with the good man goes York yeah. with actually Doctor Who will turn in Let's Kill Hitler. Yeah. Come on. Greatest ah. title ever. I may have screamed a lot yeah. for that one. <laughs> but so we get Let's Kill Hitler, which is a, a pretty impressive episode. It's a really fun episode. It is a too. fun it's episode. It's really fun. Um, honestly, me personally, I thought it was one of the worst of the season. Yeah. And let me guess, your argument is the the Melody Pond as Mel. Yeah, just the fact that we've never heard of Mel's until this point. Sure. I thought I thought that was, because Moffat's so good at leading, or you know, dropping hints and stuff like that, that we had never heard of Mel's until right now. Sure. Um, and honestly, it was, I mean, for me, if it, wasn't, it wasn't a very exciting episode. Yeah, I love Rory decking Hitler, throwing him in the cupboard. I love that. But I don't know. I guess I expected more out of the title. I wasn't expecting a shape-shifting, time-traveling robot, um, which yeah. which I hope we're done with the Tesla. I, I hope we're done with that. I, I want it gone. I want it done. I want it over with. I don't need it again. Right. Um, but no, we had a great title. I don't think the episode lived up to the title. Nope, I, I, I will agree with you on that one. Uh, I'm not saying this is certainly the best episode of the season. Um, it's a decent halfway starter. Uh, it gets some energy. And I will say that the opening sequence with the crop circle is possibly the coolest way of getting the Doctor's yeah. attention. Yes. That was really brilliant. Um, and, and there's also one other issue I had with uh, Let's Go Hitler. Uh, timeline doesn't match up. Unless, of course, with with uh, Melody regenerating until the, into the infant back in the 60s, how did she get to England in, I guess, in the 80s? As a baby. She said that. Keep in mind, she's not a Time Lord. She yeah. has some Gallifreyan DNA from exposure to the, the, right. the schism. We don't know how that's going to affect her. Therefore, there are no rules because she specifically states, last time this happened, I ended up a kid in New York. So yeah. we actually get not just, um, ooh, New York. Yeah, but the thing is, is um, in the last episode of The Confidential, in... Oh, yeah, I haven't watched any of those, Okay, so. basically, they basically say she goes from that New York City straight to England. But you have to think, but there's too, no they, way. They, they don't explain pretty how. Much made her into this, like, the silent... Like, yeah, the, 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 the only way you see that happening is if, you know, the silence they, came, they got the man, and, took her, and took her there. But, I mean, it would have been nice in the confidential if this is, quote-unquote, River Song's history. They would have told you how she made it from New York to England as an infant. No, I don't have a complaint with that. Um, it, it bugs me. Because it, it's not like Moffat leaves such a big hole. Remember, hallway. Confidential did get cancelled. <laughs> yeah, though, funny thing is... It's coming back, sort of, with a bunch of specials leading up to the 50th. Yeah, sure. Leading up to the 50th. They spent all their money. Instead of doing Confidential, they gave us awesome computer-generated dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think um, with Moffat, who is probably... I imagine that the scripts are not finalized until the moment they hand them to him to actually record. Um, yeah. I think... River Song is such a tricky character because she's she's been with two doctors so far. Potentially, there could be another one. I know that you think the history with with River is done, but and I, in a way, I kind of wouldn't mind River as a chapter in doc, the Doctor's history gone, so we could move on. But she's such an amazing character that I feel like every once in a while, as long as Moffat is writing this series, you can expect that River, in one form or another, um, pops up, well, and we s assume she's used up all regenerations. The doctor lies. Yeah. So you know, and on, and honestly, if, if she does have some regenerative powers, don't forget, go back to the five doctors. Time lords can, they can restore the regeneration cycle. Um, yes. I'm just can. saying. I mean, they, they haven't mentioned that they can do it. And I mean, she, 
Uh, she regenerated like a Time Lord regenerates. Look, I will say this about the five Doctors. For your theories, multiple theories, yeah. too, to have any um, credibility, we should just ignore the five Doctors. I think everybody pretty much is in agreement that the five Doctors would be better left completely forgotten as far as continuity in the series is concerned. Well, so, no, I disagree because I think I think it goes back to the, the big question at the end of the series because they, they mention part of it there. He gives a piece of why he left. Okay. I mean, there's, and Moffat, you know, you know, who was the first Doctor he brought back? Oh, what, Davison? Davison. So, I mean, he definitely has a fondness for Davison's run and Davison himself, I think. Anyway. Um, Why? He's oh, so that's, 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 that's another conversation. <laughs> which, actually, we, sh like we should debate that sometime. Vista cuffs are going to be happening. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so, do you have anything you want to say about Let's Kill Hitler before we move on? I, I thought it was a fun episode. I think it's a great episode. It's a lot of fun. I'll say it's fun, but I just I expected more out of it. Truthfully, after a good man goes to war, I really think we needed a lighthearted, fun episode, though. I I agree. I think truthfully, after a good man goes to war, nothing was gonna was gonna compete. I, there's yeah. a single episode that comes close. Well, no, I take that back. There's one that I okay. Like then we have Night Terrors. Night Terrors. I, I don't think it's gonna have any repercussions in. No, what, but what those comes dolls next. are really creepy. Yeah, I'd like to go ahead and apologize to my wife for telling her it's not that scary of an episode just so I could get her to watch it. Um, Poor woman. There is a look that the, the well-born women can give. I got that look a lot that night. Um, anyway, um, Night Terrors, anything from it? Yeah. I... I think when I was writing my notes, I, I don't think I, I found yeah. anything that I found particularly I think, interesting. I think that comes and goes. It's a good episode. It's yeah. not a bad episode. It has... It, I think what's interesting about it this whole season, there's actually quite a lot of scary parts to it, Yeah. Um, which is interesting. Uh, certainly, I still feel that season... Or sorry, series six yeah. is the best series of the new Who. Um, I think overall, as far as the story arc is concerned, about individual episodes... Uh, I think it's the best, and there's really some dark stuff in it. Yeah. And um, then we, I, well, you're talking about dark. I think we get one of the best episodes next to like. Um, good man goes to war. Good, good man goes to war. The doctor's wife. The girl who waited. The episode tears. puts me in tears, tears every time I watch this episode. Only a cold-hearted individual with no heart would not cry I in that episode. I do find it very amusing you're lucky. that oh, you don't have a heart, Amy, can't be cold. Amy is left for, like, what, 30-something years, and she totally gives up on Rory. Yes! But See? Rory Thank is you! 2,000 years! Yeah. 2,000, and yeah. she just waits for her. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, that, I think that was one of my problems with it. I think it's a brilliant episode. I think um, what um, they did with this episode, I thought was really cool, is it's an exploration of time, but not in a linear or mm -hmm. even wibbly wobbly way i think the um um what is it called the five not the five springs the something waters um i i think that institute is a really brilliant idea i think the doctor mentioning that other races have two hearts i think is very cool um i feel like this episode if nothing else strengthens my argument that amy um williams or millie pond becomes Amy Rumsford because she has the ability to figure out these devices and essentially create yeah. a sonic probe yeah. uh, to It's a sonic screwdriver. To, to explain um, yeah. quantum mechanics and physics, which is something that Amelia Rumsford watched Stones of Blood um, has a kind of innate understanding of that. I, and I think it was interesting. I think it was a good episode. Um, well, I think it's interesting that the position that the doctor puts Rory in, which I, I think still has repercussions yet to come. Look, here's the one thing. If the if there's one person who's ever traveled with the Doctor realizes it's a bad idea to travel with the Doctor, it's Rory. Rory, every episode. If, <laughs> well, I if just think every episode he, he survives, um, he realizes that this is not safe. Well, no, he's well, also, also the, though, if you, were, if you were married to Amy Pond, and you had a young Amy Pond and an old Amy Pond, do you think you could handle two Amy Ponds? <laughs> Yeah, but are you asking me if I'd like to handle two Amy Ponds? Well, no, not 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 two <laughs> yes. young ripe Karen Gillians, but this very brooding Amy Pond that was There'd hardened some... over the years. No, I thought and... I thought um, I thought the ending of it was really quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think it was a very moving episode. Well, 
I think the interesting thing is, is we also deal with time can be rewritten in this episode. Because originally, Amy, the, the older Amy, when she was younger, rejected the help. But this time around, she helps. See, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't read it that way either. Um, I realize it's a paradox mm-hmm. that, that, that Moffat's very good at saying, yeah. you know, for instance, how did the doctor get out of the Pandora to begin with? Oh, he let himself out. Well, how did he do that? Why are he letting himself out? I think with that story they created, I think if Doctor Who has told us anything, time can be re- written in general. Uh, I'm not really sure which fixed points in time the doctor is mentioning. Remember yeah. Kennedy? Um, yeah. But but this time it wasn't the doctor rewriting time or anything like that. It was one of his companions. She made the choice. Right. If anyone can rewrite time, it's Amy, Amy Bond. Bond. Yeah. And the fact that you know Amy was like, you know, I want you to open the door, but you can't if you love me. Right. I mean, there were some tough choices in That's there. Right. And and I think you know, I, I think there are still repercussions coming from this um, episode. Yeah. Especially in, from Rory, um, which makes me really interested. I mean. I think this is going to explain a lot, you know, if, because we don't know exactly who's going to die or what's going to happen in, in episode five next season. I think a lot of the motivation of whatever happens is going to be pulled from this episode, character-wise. I think, I think that's a good observation. Yeah. I would also like to point out that the preview that we got that, um, for series seven yeah. um, and some of the leaked photos from series seven of River and Amy at a grave site. Yeah. But having Amy being carried by the doctor, um, are, are, I think those were the, I think the gravesite photos were leaked intentionally for all of us to yeah. just froth over. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think they're doing a really good job of yeah. going, they, I think they might both die. Then we get the God Complex. Yeah. Um, do you think anything in this episode is going to carry over into the next season? Um, would I like to see it? Sure. This is, I think, one of my favorite episodes of the series. Um, dude, I think I've said that too many times. I can't. I really, I really like the God Complex. I, I will say, I really like this episode, but I thought they showed the monster a little too soon. Like, it was very lackluster. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. But the, I, I also think one. knowing that the monster isn't the point of the story. Um, yeah, but I was just like, at first, I was like, okay, what is this thing? What is this? What is mm-hmm. this? And then they show me, and I'm like... Oh. Yeah, but from the trailers, I, I had the feeling that it was going to be a minotaur. Anyway, I, I mean, at the very I mean, beginning, I just think that they it's not a minotaur. It's after a all the yeah. after all the kind of like just really anticipating spooky stuff that happened, I was kind of just like, oh, okay. Do I think it has repercussions? Well, certainly, if nothing else, the last five minutes of the episode has yeah. repercussions because yeah. it's the first time the Doctor leaves Amy and Rory. They're gone. Oh. Um, of course, he means he comes back, but. He, he, I mean, he also makes it so Amy doesn't have to, you know, he, he isn't this godlike figure to Amy. You know, this, this thing that will always be there. She breaks her faith in him. Oh, you know what I love about that is it's such a throwback to the Curse of Fenric, um, where Sylvester McCoy's doctor does the exact same thing to Ace, just breaks her down in order to defeat um, yeah. the, the species. I thought that was very cool. Um, I think she lost her faith in him kind of quickly, but uh, it's nice. You start to make you paying attention to when he says Amelia Pond versus Amy Williams. I thought that was yeah. kind of cool. Then I, I <laughs> then we get another one. I think one of the one of the shining. Do you have anything else you want to say about uh, the Don Complex? Then we get one of the shining stars of the season. Oh, why couldn't we have gotten Jason to come tonight? Not only for closing. Not only do we get you know Craig back. We phenomenal get, character. We get Stormageddon, Dark Lord of all. And we also get Cybermen <laughs> and Cybermats. Original Cybermen, not Cyber Cybermen, but Cybermen. I'm still waiting, BBC, for that Cybermat mouse. Oh, that's awesome. Still really waiting cool. for it. Um, That'd be smart. I've been saying that since that episode aired. <laughs> No, wait, we actually got them in a good mango store. That's just going to say, good yeah. mango store war. Yeah, but I mean, this, this free, this free is, uh, we get the cyber map, which I have always loved the cyber maps. Um, but honestly, I don't think there's going to be any repercussions from this episode. I mean, I would love to see Craig come back, but... For, he won't this season. No, from what I understand, he's way too busy on, what, their version Broadway. of Broadway. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's not going to happen. And I think that's good, because I'll tell you something. If they brought, if they had a Craig episode every season, yeah. we wouldn't appreciate it after a while. Exactly. And I think, you know, skip a year, bring Craig back. Um, 
did so Craig we, did not what's interesting about the Craig episodes is Craig is the companion for those episodes there's no Amy and Rory he has not met Amy and Rory no um, and Craig almost feels like he kind of has to come back because of the spaceship but then again um, maybe not and, and, well I, there might be one small repercussion in this episode what from Traveling the Storm again yeah I think there is a chance that you know in the future if Moffat's still writing or you know a future fan of Doctor Who um, you know that, that loves this, the idea of Storm again because you, I, you know he's going to call him Alfie, right? Yeah, but what I'm saying is there have been so many people that I know have named their baby Stormageddon now. Not named, they've nicknamed. No, I, I, I know some people that actually named their children Stormageddon. Um, that is not good parenting, people. Yeah, but what I'm saying is what happened in this episode has created... They, people love Stormageddon. Yeah, they it's, love it's Alfie. a little phenomenon now. Um, and honestly, I think this is this episode was was phenomenal, and then we get to the next. Um, but do you think there's any any, any other repercussions out of uh, closing time, other than it was a damn good episode? I kind of do hope to see Stormageddon later, just to see how this kid that met the Doctor when he was a little baby and communicated with the Doctor. But there's a, there is one actually interesting thing that now that I'm thinking about it, isn't it interesting how Craig? either ends up where Amy and Rory are or where the doctor puts Amy and Rory near Craig. Yeah, we'll see. Is, is he putting all his companions in, in one little city They're together? They're in their own little housing community. Actually, the nice thing is that if nothing else in that episode, just the, we know what Amy is going to be doing with her life. She's now yeah. a fashion model for... Uh, for uh, the girl who didn't wait. For a girl who's tired of waiting. waiting yeah. oh, that yeah. was great. Petrichor for the girl. And yeah, it was very, bravo, very smart. Yes. Um, and now the wedding. I, well, we, of course, we get the ending with, with River being strapped into the um, suit. But. Yeah, which was, which was good. Then we get the river, wedding of River song. Um, not a fan. This was just another kind of, they have to finish the season. It was fun and different. I mean, it was very different. It wasn't my favorite of the season, I will say that. Well, I think but this is nothing more than a prologue to Series 7. And only the last five minutes is a prologue to Season 7. The entire episode is to get us to the last five minutes of this episode. You want to say something? I don't know. It's an interesting episode because, like Stephen Moffat's other series finale, it didn't actually happen. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that happened in that episode technically didn't actually happen. One part, one part did. Because they said that it was just the Earth that was having that problem. And they were beaming out that signal. And they were getting all those responses. So I think all those responses actually happened. I think the galaxy heard, you know, the doctor needed help. Right. It happened in that reality. But that reality is a... Yeah, just no. He said that there was a bubble around Earth that was causing the paradox. It was just Earth that was being affected, not the rest of the universe, not the rest of the galaxy. It was just Earth that was being affected by this time paradox. Hmm. Okay. And because that's why nobody else could come down to help because they couldn't enter the that, paradox. Yeah. Hmm. I think that will have repercussions. Yeah. I think we're gonna. Um, well, I also think it will kind of went to um, uh, strengthen the idea that the Doctor kind of needs to be on his own, which we'll, we've already seen from our preview, um, our sneak trailer for today, uh, that that, uh, that can happen. Um, yeah. So were we happy that it turned out to be a shape-shifting robot? No. We think I, it could have been really, something cleverer. I really it pinned that it was. Yeah. So. See, I didn't see that coming. I still thought I it was... I totally a, saw that coming. I, I saw, I, no, I still thought it was a ganger. I mean, I thought there was going to be something. No, I totally saw the robot. Uh, I didn't care one way or another. Um, uh, I thought it was a clever episode. I, I thought it had it poked some fun. It's always nice to see um, that blue guy. God, my brain's not working. Uh, Dorian. Dorian. So that's fun. And, and of course. And, and then, then, then we get the thing that sets up the next two seasons. The question. We Doctor. get this sets up the question in plain series sight. seven and the series eight beginning. on yes. the fields of Trenzalore. Yeah. And then we get the you know, and which is the big setup, you know, Doctor Who, mm -hmm. um, and yes, that will have huge repercussions about what's to come. Sure. Um, 
So do you have any, any anything you want to say about, you know, I, I think we covered the, the season pretty pretty well with stuff that, you know, I think is going to become important in, in the in the um, series finale, uh, or I mean, the next two series, seven, seven and eight. Yeah, I will post. Um, um, I know I have some notes that I just forgot this evening that I'll, I'll, I'll put in there. And now we're getting to a little fun part. Like I said, that I used to do with uh, Clayton and and Lacey, which will also may, might bring up some other, you know, other questions. Um, but you guys can answer these at the same time. They're sort of like yes/no things, or like true/false, or whatever. You'll, you'll get a feel for this. And whoever scores the most points. Gets to read the credits at the end if we actually have credits for you to read, but okay. And some of these we, we sort of might have answered along the way, so you know you guys can explore it out. Okay, the time ship from the lodger from uh you know the um, the lodger and the impossible. Yes. Yes. Um, could it be the master starts? Uh, that's interesting. Maybe. Um, because I mean, we could it be? Sure. Is it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the reason the only reason I bring that up is we didn't we don't know what happened to the Master Stardis. We do see a lovely graveyard, though. <laughs> but but I mean, but most of those Stardises were were were, were sucked there by uh, Mr. House. But we don't know what happened to a Stardis. Um, and yeah. the and the Master Stardis has been black before. You know, the interior has been black. So, okay. That's yeah, it's possible. I don't know. I you know it's I. I disliked that ending so much that I don't think I've gone back and seen it since its original uh, airing. So I don't even remember how that whole master thing. Yeah, they, they, out. they never they never mentioned whatever happened to Astartes. Mm. Okay, okay, we we sort of went over this one. Dwarf uh, the dwarf Allard, Where did they get it? Um, where did it come from? And I still have issue also. Um, when did they get Amy? Because what they were saying um, didn't match up in my opinion. What are you talking about? Basically, um, they said they got her, got her, um, who? Amy, Amy, the science got her at, at one point in time. Oh, when did they pregnant, get her, get her, kidnap her. Oh. I think that's a little off time-wise. Um, okay, so here we go. Let, let's move past that. Did Ken get married and will he return? Did he get married? Yes. Um, if, if he got married, oh, that was something I wanted to talk about, uh, from that first one, I won't worry about it now. Um, no, 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 what was it? Uh, just the showing of how British that show is, <laughs> yeah. where it's just like, well, you can't get married because you're gay and he's black. So, yes, it's, that's showing sometimes. But Nixon's got a black secret, <laughs> secret service. And I was just like, how did that happen? <laughs> I'm nothing against it. It just, it just seemed yeah, it was that was That was one of the things where it's just kind of like, that just seems like poor casting. So, so would, how would you answer? They can't get married and will he return? I think that he had a mutual relationship where the two lived together, possibly. But because it was set in the 60s, no, I don't think he was married because at that point in time, because, I mean, come on now. We live, if that's set in D.C., gay marriage is still not legalized in D.C., and it is 2012. All right. The, Ken knows the doctor a favor, and here's why. The doctor comes back in time, gets him and his... Takes them to New Beyonce York. Beyonce takes them into the future. They legally get married and come back. Come back. So they yeah, know that they've go. got it. Yes. Okay. But, um, in that, and, but in that time, they wouldn't be married, though. No. If you... Okay. Not only would they wouldn't be married, they wouldn't probably be considered allowed to live with each other. But Ken, I think, should come back. Well, they can live next mm -hmm. to each other and just happen to die. Okay. So is House really gone? Oh, um, that's the entity that, the tar that yeah, went into I the know. TARDIS. Um, do you think he, he, he's really gone? Or it's really gone. I'm I'm fine with him being gone. I don't think yeah. we ever need to see him again uh, until some I think enterprising it just young writer. Him out. Yeah. Okay. We already. I, I kind of already. Threw, is there a double meaning to uh, the only water in the in the forest is the river? Um, uh, knowing that that quote was originally designed for C series five and not series six, um, that episode was supposed to get that in there earlier, so it wasn't quite so obvious. Um. I. I mean. You could ret you could retcon it and make it so, but uh, I think it's I think it's fine being where it is. Okay, um, I'm not gonna talk about the Ganger Doctor again. We sort of talked about that. Will 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 Colonel will we see Colonel Runaway again? Yes, we will see Colonel Runaway again. Um, in what form or fashion? I have no idea. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the beginning of one of these episodes, 
showed children mocking him, and the camera just pans to something else that's going on. So do you think we'll get Colonel Runaway again? Possibly. Okay. So we can get anything again, yeah. truthfully. Okay, um, this is this one also sort of comes out about that same episode. Will we ever, will Amy ever find out about Susan? Susan. Susan, his Foreman. granddaughter, yes. Susan Foreman. I know you, I know what your theory is that, that she's going to be the one asking the question. Yeah, questions. but that doesn't mean that they're going to meet. Um, do you think, Amy, do you think the doctor is finally going to tell Amy about his family, about his past? Um, well, if he does, she's dead. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think, I think he may, if, if one of them is laying dying, and I don't think he's going to open his heart up to Rory if he's laying dying. I think that's <laughs> Amy's job. Mm-hmm. I think if Amy's laying dying, um, he might tell her some things. But I, I just don't think Susan really has... She has impact. I think with the introduction in The Good Man Goes to War asking about whether or not he has children, and he says, no, did you ever? And then he skipped that question. Um... I don't know. I mean, that seems like it could be the crux of the whole next season, or we could just never deal with it, so I have no idea. Sorry, Mom. It's kind of back and forth. I'm not quite sure. I have my, my theories, but... What's your theories? Know. Well, I'm not going to go into those right now. But kind of, we, we possibly could. They may try and bring her back in, or they may just try and save all that for the 50th. Okay. Will we ever see the origin stories of the Doctor's Army that we saw in A Good Man Goes to War? Um... I, I would say that's a, a definite maybe. Um, will we see them on the show? I don't know. But I'm, I would not be surprised if we didn't get some really good big finish audio dramas with, that, with or those even characters. In the comics. Oh, and actually, the, the interesting thing about the, the big finish thing is they just got their contract renewed. For three years? Yes. Oh, I'm not at all surprised, having listened mm-hmm. to... But it's always good when they actually get that contract renewal. Well, of course. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Oh. Uh. And with the army, while you're thinking of that question, I think it's the same thing like seeing Idris again. I think they exist in this time period where we don't know what their beginnings, we don't know their endings, and I think that's fine. I think we can we can be allowed to be creative with that. Oh, oh one one thing I forgot to bring up: uh, Kingston was at was at a convention, and she said she would. So she since they're not doing anything with torture right now, she would love to see a miniseries with uh, Jack and River. I think that would be a perfect. Pairing. That would be amazing. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, having not seen Miracle Day, um, and not being a huge fan of Torchwood in general, though Children of Earth I thought was brilliant, um, I think that would be something, not like a series, if they, but like if they just did one episode, or even a movie, I think that would be brilliant. Okay. Now, this is sort of foreshadowing some stuff. We've kind of mentioned, will Roy die saving Amy, or will it be for somebody else? Because I mean, he is the compassionate one. You're assuming he's going to die. Well, no, because I mean, l- look at his history. He's, uh, he's. Oh my God! You killed Rory. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and the reason why I say that is because well, I Amy think... was willing to die for Rory in, a, in the girl who waited. I kind of think. Well, that one's a little different because Rory's always the one that gets beaten on. I really think something's going to happen to Amy because he didn't. He he said that like from the stuff we've gotten. It makes it sound like almost like one of them is going to have something happen to them. Like whether the angel swoops them back in a time where the doctor can't get to them or something. Well, if it's, if it's with the angels, and of course it is, I think what will happen is I don't think it's necessarily going to end in death. That's um, what I would I think. think if you're dealing with the angels, you're dealing with time. And since mm-hmm. the, I think they're going to, and see, here's this, this is how I would justify it with Moffat. You can rewrite time, but they're really keeping up with the you can't cross your own timeline. Yeah. So, again, if Amelia Pond becomes Amelia Rumsford, the doctor has already met her, yeah. he can't go back and see her. If Rory, Rory waited for 2,000 years, what if Rory finishes, he can't die? What if he gets a Captain Jack kind of thing, and he's at the end of time and you know still waiting for her? What if he becomes but the boy But there are times waits? have kind of turned into where he's here and she's here. Or what if he gets shunted over to a secondary dimension and he has to wait until there's a rift in that dimension. He comes over a and then maybe bay? finds a, a Bad Wolf Bay and he finds oh, an Amy clone and... No, yeah, stop that. Amy, Amy Ganger. Okay, um... Okay. Yeah, Amy Ganger. Will, will the future Amy, the one, the one who waited, ever return? Or do you think she's gone? Oh, God, I hope she never returns. No, I think she's done. I think that would be poor. 
Yeah, um, I agree. It's good for you guys. Yeah. Okay. That, um, that would be too manipulative emotions. I hate that. That's so good. Okay. Um, going back to God Complex, mm-hmm. what did the doctor see in his room? Will we ever know? Interesting thing about that is, um, from reading uh, an interview with the writers, uh, I think it's with Toby Whithouse. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Uh, he originally had something. Mm-hmm. They had something. They won't tell anybody what it was, and then they realized, no, we're just not going to show it. Um, of course, interesting, we have... Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. There is something from God Complex, because what number was Amy's room? Do we know that was Amy's room? Oh, good point. Uh, yes, we do. Because she started saying, uh, she started going through the praise hymn. It was number seven. Her room was number seven. So, I think that has something to do with it. What do we do? We find out what's happening, Doctor. Gun to my head, I'm gonna say it's the doctor. We see himself. Um, well, I mean, well, we, we, there are a few things we can glean. We know he saw the inside of the TARDIS. We heard the cloister bell. We heard other TARDIS noises. Mm-hmm. So it, it had something to do with the TARDIS, the TARDIS, and something bad happening in the TARDIS because the cloister bell rang. Oh, right, and we still haven't seen the TARDIS explode. Yeah, we yeah exactly. The big thing, who blew up the TARDIS? It, you know. Hmm, interesting, uh, yeah. And also, Rory, he had no room. Did Rory have a room and we just never saw it? No, Rory, Rory did have a room. But he also kind of was just like, he knew that no one was going to save him from there. Yeah. He had that, because he saw the exit. Sure. The room is, the whole setup of that is powered by that, that faith. Yeah. If you don't have faith, you're... No use to the ship. The ship is just gonna yeah. boot you. Yeah, because I mean, like, like Ray was the only one that even had a chance to get back to the TARDIS. Um, and this is after 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 watching closing time. Is it time for an upgrade to the Cybermen? Because the classic Q, you know, almost every time we saw the Cybermen, you know, they had some sort of upgrade. They looked a little different. You know, they they were becoming more more machine than man. Um, we've now had pretty much the same Cybermen through the entire run of New Who. Is it time for us to get some sort of design change to them? I, I like the design. I think mm-hmm. CGI can do what what you know even brilliant costuming can. What tinfoil and plastic wrap couldn't do back in the <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> then we also have Yappy the dog. Um, and Matt Smith, you know, having such a fun time with Yappy the dog, which really made me want to see Matt Smith and K nine. Sure. Um, uh, do I want to see K nine come back? All right, here's the thing. And please don't spoil this for me. I haven't watched the Sarah Jane Adventures, so I don't know what happens to K nine. So I would, re- I would prefer you not spoil that. Well, I mean, K 9s in licensing hell right now. Yeah, that's that's oh, pretty much right, it. Yeah, he's in Australia, Australia and can fly. But, but but the thing is, um, they did fig- they did work out the licensing rights. That's the reason why in in the last season of Sarah Jane you see a lot more K nine. And that's not a real well, spoiler. I think I think possibly mm-hmm. we'll see K nine in the fiftieth. We we'll better see K nine in the fiftieth. But I don't know for next season. I think they have a lot going on. Okay, and this is this is a silly question, but I want to answer it anyway. Will the message have any repercussions? You know, who, who, yeah. who? Do you, will that have any long-term repercussions? Only if they answer it. Okay, and going to that, is the is the question really Doctor Who, or is that just a misdirection on Moffat's part? The mess with us, because he's so good at that. <clears throat> yeah, shapeshifting robot. I, I don't know. I can't answer that one. Is it possibly? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I got no clue. So you can't take it. So you're saying basically you can't take the Doctor Who 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 at face value with when it comes to Moffat and his writing. Well, he tries to lead you in the wrong direction so many times, anyway. Sure. Um, you know, the whole point of calling the show Doctor Who is is originally the Doctor... The show was supposed to be that you have these characters, um, Ian and Barbara, and even Susan, who the audience could relate to, who understood that kind of trope as far as, as dramatic television, as far as the BBC was concerned... But the Doctor was supposed to be the mystery, and he only introduced himself as a Doctor, and so I, the, the shtick was Doctor Who. Um, you know, and I think once you get into the third Doctor, once you get into Pertwee, um, 
they start to answer those questions. You know, we started getting backstory mm -hmm. of Gallifrey, Time Lord, yeah. stuff like Omega. that. Omega, Omega, Omega. Omega. Yeah, so, um, uh, but then you're starting to get into the Andrew Cartmel uh, master plan and then bringing back the idea that the Doctor is somebody more powerful than he actually appears to be. Um, would it have repercussions? If the answer is yes, is it misdirection? Um, I almost wish it is. Um, okay. And here, and here we come to the part, who do you think asks the question? I, I have said countless times the, who I think the, pos the possible people are going to be. You, you're pretty certain you know who it is. Well, here's the thing. Um, to answer your question about misdirection, I think the question is not going to be nearly as important as, as people lead it to believe. I wouldn't be surprised if the question wasn't answered in the fifth episode. What are season of uh, uh, series eight, series seven? Yo, you think you, you think it's in? I think I think I think Amy's going to ask the question. You think Amy's going to be the one to ask the question? Yeah, Amy or Rory, but I think it's going to be Amy. And the reason I I say that is. Um, in episode one, okay. Amy goes to the bathroom, and inside the bathroom, of course, is, is Joy, and yeah. Joy gets zapped by a silent. And he says, um, and this is where having my notes would have been really <laughs> yeah. useful, he says, because you have to tell him what you can't know, and you have to ask him what he can't possibly say. I'm paraphrasing, but he basically says... Hmm, I'm going to have to go back and watch that. ...something along those lines, and you're like, well, son of a bitch. And that's something Moffat would do. Right, because who is it that's asking that? It's a silent. The silent is telling Amy that she has to ask him something that she can't ask him, and, that he can't answer. And that's sort of... They, they have that, that subliminal power anyway. Mm -hmm. So he easily could be implanting the idea in her head mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah. So was there anything else you guys... Oh, God, the silence are actually working against the silence. <laughs> if there are two factions, um, oh, there's gonna be two factions. <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> hey, they did the dialogue somewhere on one occasion. Oh, yes, they okay. did. Okay. So, is there anything else you want to say about this this series? What it might mean to series seven, and then the fiftieth series eight, um, or have you pretty much said your piece? No, I. You know what? I don't think series eight is is um, the fiftieth. I think. S series seven is going to cross over into this the the fiftieth. We're gonna get the fiftieth. Then we're gonna get series eight. Well, no, from from what I from from what I understand, you know, the the series after series seven, series eight is going to be the fiftieth, and it's going to be an extended season. Oh my God! Does that mean we're gonna get an entire year of Doctor Who? There's a real possibility. He's. I mean, there's a possibility that they Maybe. that they were gonna to run together. There's also a possibility that he's already filming stuff for it that he knows he needs, just so people don't realize what's going on. That you know, to throw people off. Um, hmm. So I, I will say something funny about the filming. My friend from London said that the crew, when they went to New York, mm -hmm. was so surprised that all these people were watching them and taking pictures because in London they don't do, or in um, Cardiff or wherever they were filming at, they don't do that. Like, people were just like, oh, okay, whatever. Like, you get the random shots, but they said people normally don't like sit there and watch. Oh, America. Films. When it comes to Doctor Who, we're the new Japan. Yeah. And honestly, I, I think they're finally real. And I think that's a magical thing. I mean, they're letting the actors come to Comic-Con. They're letting the actors, you know, come to the States more th than they ever did Tenet. They realize there's a huge fan base over here. And I'm, I'm very happy. They don't want about the mob that. that would happen if I think Tenet commercially, <laughs> I think commercially, I think there's probably even a little bigger fan base here. Oh, um, I, I agree. Because we'll, we'll buy anything. Oh, no shit. And I cannot wait for the Sonic Screwdriver remote control, TV remote. Universal Sonic remote. Yes, I am going to be buying that. Um, but this episode already, already has run long, so um, I hope you enjoyed our, uh, our, our Series 6 review, our sort of Series 7 primer. And I know we didn't talk about the last Christmas special. Um, well, that's because the last Christmas special is technically Episode 1 of Series 7. Exactly. Um, and so this is pretty much uh, Gallifrey Private Radio uh, signing off. Peace. <laughs>